Mikhail Prokhorov is a Russian oligarch with a net worth of $13.9 billion, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. He made his fortune by grabbing Russian state-owned metals assets at prices far below market value, by using his connection with long-term partner and Russia's richest person, Vladimir Putanin. Vladimir Putanin was once Deputy Prime Minister of Russia, and he introduced Loans for Shares program. Through this program, Mikhail Prokhorov gave loans to government and in return got state-owned companies and assets which were sold to him at dirt cheap prices. Mikhail Prokhorov, Russian oligarch who owned $3.2 billion Brooklyn Nets We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Like his fellow oligarch Roman Abramovich, Mikhail Prokhorov is also involved in owning sports teams. He once owned $3.2 billion NBA team Brooklyn Nets and financed $700 million to build its home arena Barclays Center. He sold the basketball team for $2.35 billion to co-founder Alibaba Group Joe Tsai, which is the highest price ever paid to an NBA team. The deal is estimated to bring $2 billion profit for Mikhail Prokhorov, who invested less than $500 million. Like all other oligarchs, Mikhail Prokhorov also keeps expensive yachts. He owns a 95-meter yacht called Palladium, which he bought in 2010 for $200 million. He spends $10 to $20 million every year to maintain the super yacht. It is one of the most expensive yachts of the world and it comes with a jacuzzi jet pool and a private cinema. He also owned a yacht called Solomar, which he sold in 2016 for $30 million. When Putin came into power, he made clear that oligarchs can keep their assets if they only stay away from politics. The last time a Russian oligarch entered politics was Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who was the richest Russian at that time. Masked commandos arrested him from his private jets, his assets were seized and gifted to Putin's friends. He was first sentenced to nine years in jail, then again was given another 14-year sentence. In 2012, Mikhail Prokhorov ran against Vladimir Putin in Russia's presidential election and lost it, gaining around 8% of the vote. Want to know what happened to Mikhail Prokhorov when he entered into politics? Why he wanted to dethrone Putin by running against him in presidential elections? And how he got his wealth? Watch the full video. In 1965, Mikhail Prokhorov was born in Moscow which was in Soviet Union at that time. His father Dmitry Prokhorov was one of the eight children. He grew up poor and his family was persecuted as class enemies as they were Bolshevists, which was a far-left revolutionary group formed by Lenin. The Bolshevists saw better times when Lenin came into power, but it was short-lived. When Joseph Stalin came into power, he persecuted them again. Due to these persecutions, Dmitry Prokhorov's parents were forced to flee from one part of Siberia to another. Dmitry Prokhorov somehow managed to study law in Moscow and later became head of international relations for the Soviet Committee of Physical Culture and Sport. He was one of the few to have the privilege of traveling abroad. He was invited to join the KGB but declined when his wife threatened to leave him. Mikhail Prokhorov's mother Tamara was materials engineer at the Institute for Chemical Machine Building, which was a research group specialized in plastics. Tamara's mother, Anna Belkina, was a Jewish microbiologist who during World War II made vaccines in Moscow. Anna Belkina lived her whole life in fear of persecutions as many of other Jewish people were either fined, exiled or killed during the tide of anti-Semitism that swept through Soviet society after World War II. In 1983, Mikhail Prokhorov got the admission in the prestigious and competitive institute, which was then known as the Moscow Finance Institute. During studies, he took two years break to serve compulsory service in the Soviet Army. In 1988 during studies, Russians were allowed to own businesses for the first time in 60 years. Mikhail Prokhorov started a company called Regina. He would buy jeans for one ruble, stonewash them and sell them for 15 rubles each. The business was a success and from profits he bought his first car, and for the first time he was free from using public transport. In 1989, after graduation, he worked in a management position at the International Bank for Economic Cooperation, or IBEC, which was created to handle the foreign trade accounts of Soviet states. In 1991, when he was head of international finance at the IBEC, his best friend Alexander Kloponin from Moscow Finance Institute introduced him to future Deputy Prime Minister, 
and Russia's richest person to be, Vladimir Potanin. Vladimir Putanin had spent time in foreign countries and was fluent in English and French. His political connections were invaluable. These connections made Mikhail Prokhorov one of the richest people in Russia, made Alexander Klopanin the deputy prime minister of Russia. In 1992, Mikhail Prokhorov and Vladimir Putanin, after the fall of the Soviet Union, founded Russia's first private bank called MFK Bank. IBEC was in trouble as many of newly formed countries under fallen Soviet Union were not able to pay back their loans. Letters went out from IBEC's management to clients suggesting that they shift their deposits to the new bank called MFK. Deposits of IBEC were taken away by MFK while leaving behind the debts. It is estimated MFK Bank made $300 million within six months. In 1993, Mikhail Prokhorov and Vladimir Putanin founded United Export-Import Bank. Mikhail was chairman of the board while Vladimir was president of the bank. Within two years, the bank had assets more than $2 billion. In 2000, the bank was merged with Rossbank. In 1995, Russian President Boris Yeltsin's government was short of cash. There were budget shortfalls for government expenditures, year-to-year -year inflation was over 200%. Elections were near and public opinion was not in favor of Yeltsin. Vladimir Putanin came with an idea which was known as Loans for Share Scheme. The idea was that Russian banks give loans to government in return of shares of state-owned assets. The assets owned by state, which included energy, metal and telecom companies were auctioned to banks at a fraction of their original price. These banks were controlled by men who were later called oligarchs. The United Export-Import Bank ran auctions for the Yeltsin's government. Majority of bidding were won by either the bank itself or its affiliates. The government got the money while the bank received shares. The government never paid back the loans and the bank took the ownership of the collateral shares of companies. In 1995, Mikhail Prokhorov became partner of Vladimir Putanin's hold company Interos. The company bought the 38% shares of Norilsk Nickel, which was auctioned by United Export-Import Bank. The rival's bid was rejected like Rosiki Credit Bank offered $355 million, but it was rejected and Interos got the 38% ownership by just paying $170 million. Norilsk Nickel was making $400 million profit per year and is the world's largest refined nickel producer and the 11th largest copper producer. In 1997, due to loan default by the government, full control of Norilsk Nickel was given to Interos. Mikhail Prokhorov and Vladimir Putanin, through their bank, purchased state-owned oil company Sedanko at one-third of its price. Sedanko was the eighth-largest company in Russia by revenue in 1995. In 2001, Mikhail Prokhorov became the CEO of Norilsk Nickel. He fired many of the workers and made reforms to improve the company financial conditions. He improved labor conditions by improving cafeterias and lavatories. He invested millions of dollars to reduce pollution. But still, the company remained among the most toxic places on Earth, with many of the workers getting lung cancer. He also invested to modernize the transport and logistics of the company. The reforms eventually caused the company to have much higher profits. He used the extra profits to buy the gold mines in Russia and South Africa. In 2006, he created a separate entity, Polyus Gold, and transferred Norilsk Nickel's gold mining interests to Polyus Gold, making it Russia's largest gold producer. During his tenure as CEO, the stock of Norilsk Nickel rose from $7 to $189, which is a 2,700% increment in less than six years. The market cap of the company was $2.5 billion in 2001. After six years, it was more than $60 billion. In 2007, Mikhail Prokhorov and Vladimir Putanin had a disagreement and they both decided to sell the assets under their holding company Interos. Putanin owned 30% of Norilsk Nickel, while Prokhorov owned 25%. Mikhail Prokhorov offered Putanin to sell his 25% stake for $15 billion, but Putanin refused. Mikhail Prokhorov went to President Putin to complain about Potanin. Putin called Potanin on the phone in the presence of Prokhorov and said, It's dishonest to cheat on partners. In 2008, Prokhorov sold all shares of Norilsk Nickel to Oleg Deripaska's Rusal for $14 billion, 
of which $7 billion of cash and 14% Rusal stock was given. Rusal is the world's second largest aluminum company by primary production output, and it accounts for almost 9% of the world's primary aluminum output. His cashing out of Norisk Nickel stocks proved to be the best decision ever, as after three months, the world saw the global recession and stock markets crashed. In 2007, after the decision to exit Interos, Mikhail Prokhorov formed the investment fund called Onexim Group. The fund had assets valued at $17 billion at the time. He made investments in nanotechnology and hydrogen fuel cells that are used in energy generation and medicine. He acquired Optogan, which is a producer of high-brightness LEDs based in Russia. In 2008, once he gets funds by selling stake of Norris Nickel, he acquired 50% of Renaissance Capital, a major Russian investment bank headquartered in London. In 2021, the bank had the total assets of $3.62 billion. In 2009, he acquired 51% stake of RBK Group, which is a large media group in Russia. In 2013, he sold his 38% stake in Polyus Gold for $3.6 billion. He used the money to buy a 27.8% stake in Eurokali, which he bought for $4.9 billion. In 2009, Mikhail Prokhorov started to build his international image, started seeking to acquire NBA team. He paid $223 million to real estate developer Bruce Ratner, who was owner of American professional basketball team New Jersey Nets, and in return he got 80% stake in the New Jersey Nets and 40% of its unbuilt arena which was located at the heart of Brooklyn, and was later called Barclays Center. Mikhail Prokhorov's arranged $700 million funding for the construction of Barclays Center. Barclays Bank funded $200 million. In return, they got 20-year naming rights agreement. In 2012, Barclays Center was opened, and the team was moved to Brooklyn, New York, and was renamed to Brooklyn Nets. In 2014, Mikhail Prokhorov bought out the remaining investors in the Brooklyn Nets and Barclays Center, including Bruce Ratner, for $285 million. In 2017, he sold his 49% stake in Brooklyn Nets to Joseph Tsai for $1 billion. In 2019, Tsai bought the remaining 51% stake for $1.35 billion. Tsai also bought the Barclays Center for around $1 billion in a separate deal. The combined cost of the Brooklyn Nets and its arena Barclays Center is estimated to be $3.35 billion, which is a record price for an NBA team. Previously, the record was set in 2017 by Tillman Fertitta, who acquired the team Houston Rockets, for $2.2 billion. From the deal, Mikhail Prokhorov made roughly $2 billion profit from less than $500 million investment in just 10 years. In 2003, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, with a net worth of $15 billion, was the richest person in Russia. According to Forbes, he was the 16th richest person in the world at that time. Mikhail Khodorkovsky owned Yukos Oil Company, which he acquired in 1996 for $309 million through Loans for Share Scheme. Yukos was the biggest oil company in Russia, which accounted for 20% oil production in Russia. Mikhail Khodorkovsky announced that he will acquire the Russian oil firm Sibneft and merge it with Yukos. That would be one of the world's largest oil producers. When Vladimir Putin became president, he offered compromise to oligarchs to either stay out of politics or face the music. Mikhail Khodorkovsky rejected the offer and funded opposition to take out Putin. Mikhail Khodorkovsky was arrested and then convicted of tax fraud of $27 billion. Simultaneously, Yukos assets were seized and transferred to state-owned companies Rusneft and Gazprom. The government was instructed not to collect taxes, but rather to bankrupt Yukos. In the end, Mikhail Khodorkovsky spent more than a decade behind bars and was removed from the political arena. Vladislav Surkov is one of the closest aides of Vladimir Putin. He is the man behind the power and influence in the administration of Putin. Vladislav Surkov created a system known as managed democracy. Elections are rigged. Pro-Putin opposition parties are allowed to exist only. New generation was hostile to government. To counter that, Surkov started to create a new party. In 2011, Surkov created a new party for young hostile middle class called Right Cause. Mikhail Prokhorov was assigned the task to lead the party. 
He insisted that his decision to lead the party is not influenced by Putin. In 2012, due to his internal conflicts with Right Cause Party, he ran for president as independent against Putin and he lost, getting 7.98% of the votes. Mikhail Prokhorov came from a privileged background, and he inherited excellence from his parents. His admission to prestigious finance school Moscow Finance Institute enabled him to learn the ins and outs of Russia's business realities, and his contacts with people like future Deputy Prime Ministers Alexander Klaponin and Vladimir Potanin enabled him to become one of the most powerful oligarchs in Russia. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.